Thank you very much uh, to the International Vision Sonoras Festival organized by the Mexican Center for Sonic Arts and Music. My name is Eva Gwen and I'm a pianist based in Toronto, Canada. Um, I'm trained in classical repertoire, but uh, my artistic practice has gotten much broader since I was a student. Um, and the works that I'll be showing you today um, through this online process are works that um, are exploring the piano augmented using different technologies. Um, they are introduced uh, in themselves, so I won't go into too much detail. Um, but right now my, my artistic practice uh, centers around explorations of creating new work for this new piano, um, as well as continuing to interpret works by living composers and the work of Eric Satie. I was invited to come to CMAS, uh, have a residency at CMAS, um, in the spring of March of exactly um, 2020. Um, I was going to travel on the 13th of March, actually, and at, just at that time, as everyone knows, the pandemic was really on the uprise, so borders were closing, and I, I cancelled, uh, really unfortunately. I mean, it's a good thing, of course, because I probably would not have been able to return to Canada. But um, I was very happy with this, this invitation because it was earlier uh, in the development of the work and I was going to spend time there to uh, work with programmers and continuing composing works. Um, since then, since a year ago though, I've, I've had the time to do that in Toronto um, and I hope one day to come to CMAS to actually perform these works live. The, um, the works that are online for you to see are from two different festivals uh, within Canada. Um, one is uh, a festival called Music, oh, sorry, Women from Space, um, and it's an interesting project because they actually projected it uh, in a holographic theater. But what you're going to see is unidimensional, and in that uh, performance, I am playing uh, a long structured improvisation using different uh, characteristics of this augmented piano. And then the other um, documentation is from a festival in Ontario, also called Open Ears, um, and in that work. Uh, you'll see a work with media artist David Ropey called Surface Tension for Piano in Real-Time Image, as well as some compositions that I created for the augmented piano. Um, and one of the works includes uh, sampled voices, so it's not using exactly the same technology, so I'm playing with something else. So I hope you enjoy those. Uh, my project has been very generously funded by the Can Council for the Arts. We're very, very fortunate in Canada that we have a foundation or an institution like the Canada Council for the Arts, which can provide artists um, uh, funds for creative work. It's, and especially through this uh, time, it's been um, a real honor to have funding in order to continue to explore my practice when there's not the possibility for performing. Um, I would say that uh, as a pianist, it's quite difficult to to do things that change the piano. Um, and there's a, a hesitancy for that uh, within uh, the, the piano world. The piano, the piano itself as an instrument has such amazing repertoire written for it, and, um, which is fantastic. But my curiosity would like to bring, you know, started with playing music by living composers, playing music by women, bringing it really into my own time, and now working with technology also to expand its future forward. But the piano itself, uh, amongst all instruments, I think, is not future forward, uh, partially because of the huge body of work written for it, uh, amazing works. So I do feel like there's a resistance to, to make the piano, um, imagine the piano um, as a, a partnering it with other sounds and stuff. But um, it is what I, 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 or I embrace both the past and the future for the instrument that I've been associated with all of my life. Hello, um, welcome from my studio in Toronto. Um, as you probably know, um, the Ontario restrictions continue so that um, what was supposed to be a live stream from Kitchener um, is now being delivered to you from Toronto. Um, it's pre-recorded uh, because, but just pre-recorded. Uh, we're recording this on Thursday before the Saturday, 
And um, I just want to say that this is not a professional studio, so if there's any extra ambient sound, then it's just, it is, it is how it is. Uh, there are, it's not like a blocked out audio space. And also uh, for image, um, for service tension, which we'll talk about later, um, in a traditional concert venue, which you can darken, there would be a, a video or a screen which would be rising from the piano and you'd see the image on that. But we're going to sort of create something like that so you can get the experience of how sound and image are, are connected. Um, I'd like to thank very much Richard Burroughs and the Open Ears Festival for inviting me and also just for persevering through this time and making a festival happen. It's so important and it's such a positive thing to offer artists a chance to actually express themselves in this very difficult time and to share. Um, I'd also like to thank Peter Hatch, uh, former director of Open Ears for commissioning Surface Tension many years ago, which was um, it's an amazing piece and it's, uh, it's the only collaboration that I've done with my husband, media artist David Rookby, and again we'll talk about the piece later. Um, I'd also like to, count, to thank the Canada Council for the Arts for supporting um, uh, and sustaining my creative practice over many years, and in particular, again, for these projects that you're hearing today. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Anne Michaels. Um, there's a piece that um, I created uh, which uses her poetry and her voice, as well as uh, the members of URGE, the URGE Collective, Fidesz Kruger, Linda Catlin-Smith, Marie-José Chartier, and Catherine Duncanson. I'd also like to thank um, Patrice Colomb and Avatar, which is uh, in Quebec City. It's a place, it's a resident, residency I went to um, where I worked with Patrice to develop uh, the Max patch and program that I, I use for creating uh, my pieces for augmented piano. And I'd also like to thank uh, the University of Toronto for the residency and CMAS in Mexico for a future residency, which was uh, postponed due to, due to COVID. Um, so I hope you enjoy today's show, and I look forward to uh, playing for you live in the future. We're going to provide you with a brief introduction to the uh, different sections of surface tension. In the first one, um, I've created a model of a computer-based model of the way water moves. And then we've reflected the inside of a piano into that water. When Eve plays a note, it's like uh, a drop of water falling into that, creating ripples. She plays very, very quickly in staccato. It's quite it's sort of just dry little dimples on the surface. Uh, if she holds down the sustain pedal or holds the keys down for a long time, you get. An infinite, continuous rippling of the, of the surface of the water. And as she releases the sustain pedal, then the water clarifies the, 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 the ripples reduce until it's just a flat surface again. In orbits, each individual note produces a circle of a different, at a different speed, but you don't see the speed, you just see the circle. And so multiple notes, uh, which are the same notes within different octaves, group together to make that circle bigger or smaller, but it's the one circle that represents that, that note. If you play a note that is quite harm has a harmonic relationship with that first note, the two mix their circles together to produce a more complicated form. As the relationship, or as the number of notes, as the harmonic relationship gets more and more complicated, that form gets more complicated. This work, Tower, was probably the most fun to expose Eve to because it really uh, pr pr proposed an unusual circumstance for her as a performer. She's building a tower. The tower is, is, has a spine going up the middle and the notes of the octave are sort of positioned around the tower. The, the notes place parts of the tower 
in the fastness of the tower further or closer to the spine depending on how loud or quiet she plays. And this chunky chord produces quite a splat on the screen. Um, and uh, you will eventually see replica towers appearing in the distance which show you sort of the history of the performance. The next piece is based on something that Eve says about playing the piano, which is that she has an enormous amount of control up to the moment that the, uh, that the, the hammer hits the string. And once the hammer hits the string, it's out of her hands. The note flies out into the space, the concert hall, and bounces off all the surfaces and they, you know, has, interferes with all the other sounds in the space. So I wanted to give, in this case, each sound it's a life of its own but then to, to create a sense of these relationships. So when Eve plays a single note, it produces a sort of trajectory, this little creature with its, with its trail visible behind. If she plays two notes um, that are, have a harmonic relationship, then they're attracted to each other. They, they, they swarm around each other. But, if, but two notes that are, say, a semitone apart, live a life of their own. They're not attracted to each other. They, they ignore each other because they don't have that sort of consonance that drives them together. So the combination produces this kind of dance of, of affinities and, and attractions and, and, and repulsions that create a kind of a, a play of the harmonic structures that are happening in the music. This final one uh, is based on some footage that I took in a snowstorm in downtown Toronto. And I used uh, some computer software to separate the snowflakes from the background, which allows me to play games with those, with the trajectories of individual snowflakes. In this work, um, Eve brings out the snowflakes with her performance at the piano. So if she plays very staccato, rapid notes, you just see the appearance of those single snowflakes or clusters of snowflakes from little fragments of time. If she holds down the key a little longer, you see more of the path of the snowflake. If she holds down the sustain pedal, then those, those paths uh, inscribe themselves over and over across the surface to build up a whole, a really dense pattern of, of things. And if she, and then depending on how many notes, she's, keys she's actually holding down, the image of the snowflakes gets brighter or dimmer. I hope you enjoy.
The next three pieces are works that I've um, created for myself um, to perform. Um, and they are exploring the idea of um, how to augment the piano in ways that I would like to hear the piano. So the piano doing things or seeming to do things that it shouldn't be able to do. So it's the piano, the acoustic piano, in duet with this augmented instrument. Um, and some part of me would oh, has always wanted to take the piano on the journey, like I've been taken on a journey with the instrument. So I also think of this piece as a little bit of magic realism. So it's real, but then sometimes it's not what should be real. Um, the first piece is called Tidal. The second piece is called A Doubling, and it uses text by Anne Michaels and her voice as well, and uh, the voices of the four members of the Urge Collective. And um, they are artists Fides Kruker, Linda Catlin Smith, Marie Jose Chartier, and Catherine Duncanson. I'm honored to use all of these women's work. And the last piece is Colorney. Thank you very much, and I hope one day to share this, these new pieces with you in person.
is a doubling a belonging space and time vision and object body and body water and light in your absence without duality. Simultaneous as a shadow, as a spasm of turning birds, the incessant twitching of electrons. And depending on whether one's mortal gaze looks out from the realm of the living, or the realm of the dead, each casts a shadow is the shadow. Nothing exists alone or separate from its absence. absence. And what shadow belongs to consciousness? Consciousness, my love, are love, space, time, soul, duality, body, shadow, consciousness, time, body, belong, love, light, object, presence, are water, vision, shadow, soul, body, 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 soul, love, absence, oh. presence, consciousness, oh, love, oh. love, space, time, duality, body. shadow, consciousness, oh. love, love, light, object, presence, oh. water, vision, shadow, soul, body, oh. love, oh. Presence. Oh. presence, consciousness, oh. love, space. Space. Oh. Light. Oh. Shadow. consciousness, oh. Oh. without duality. Duality. Simultaneous as a shadow.
and depending on whether one's mortal gaze looks out from the realm of the living or the realm of the dead. the shadow what is the shadow nothing exists alone or separate